Welcome to this course, Introduction to Cybersecurity Literacy. This is Lesson 27, Social Media and Security. In this lecture, we're going to discuss two issues of personal security that are related to the privacy trade-offs on social networks. We're going to see how some burglars use social networking to choose their victims, and we'll see how some cyber attackers use social media to spread malware to users like you. Social media security threat number one is burglars on social media. Did you know that many burglars are devoted researchers? It's true. The more a burglar knows about a target, the better judgments a burglar can make about the potential risks and rewards of burglarizing that target. There are many kinds of information that burglars research, but the most important one is this. Will anybody be home at the time of the burglary? Modern burglars are turning to social media sites to discover when residents will be out of town, as well as other information that's relevant to the burglary. Just imagine all of the information that a clever burglar could pick up from a carelessly constructed social media profile. For example, let's consider an imaginary user named Cher. Cher posts a status update that says, Can't wait to take the kids to Cartoonland theme park for spring break. A burglar who's scanning through social media pages might stumble across this status, and so he might take a closer look at Cher's page. Scrolling through Cher's profile, he sees that she gave her husband, Floyd, a new flat-screen TV for Christmas. He also sees that Floyd gave Cher a shimmering pearl necklace. Wow, antique jewels, priceless, Cher writes in the caption of the picture. The burglar also sees that Cher has two small children in elementary school. There are several pictures of the outside of Cher's house, and the burglar is able to figure out the layout of the house from the pictures. Scrolling through a few more pictures, he sees that Cher's only pet is an adorable cat named Percy, with no evidence of a guard dog. The burglar finds that Cher hasn't posted her address on any of her social media accounts. So, the burglar looks up her address in a local directory, which only takes him a few seconds. The burglar takes a few more seconds to look up the nearest elementary school, and he uses that school's academic calendar to figure out which week Cher's children will have off for spring break. He sees that spring break begins the week of April 6th, and so he checks his schedule. He finds no scheduling conflicts, and so the burglar decides to watch Cher's house on the night of April 8th, and if nobody appears to be home, to rob it on the night of April 9th. When Cher and Floyd return from their Cartoonland theme park vacation, they find that the latch on the back window of their house has been broken. Inside, several precious items are missing, including Cher's jewelry, Floyd's flat screen TV, the kids' piggy banks, and Percy the Cat. That's an imaginary example, but real burglaries like this happen all the time. Many burglars research the houses that they burglarize, and social media makes this research much easier for them. Think about it. Could a burglar use your updates, your photos, or your location check-ins to determine how you are vulnerable or when you'll be away from home? To protect your own personal security, you should be conscious of how information that you post on social media could be used against you. When you're building a social media profile, it's a good idea to leave off the kinds of information that you normally provide when you make an online purchase or when you fill out your tax return. What kinds of information is that? I'm talking about things like your email address, your physical address, your phone number, your credit card numbers, social security numbers, driver's license numbers, PIN numbers, or any other identification information like those things. Some users won't even use their real name on social media. They'll use a nickname or a misspelling of their name, or maybe they'll use their middle name in place of their first or last name. Using a different name adds an extra layer of security to your profile. Your real friends and family will know who you are, but anonymous stalkers won't be able to find you and to identify you quite so easily. You should examine your own social media profiles, especially the parts that are visible to the public, to friends of friends, or to people on shared networks like university networks or citywide networks. When you examine your profile, try to look at it with the eyes of a burglar delete information that a burglar could use against you. You should also look at your profile through the eyes of a hacker. Look especially for any information that a hacker could use to guess the answers to security questions that you use for online profiles. As I suggested in a previous lesson, 
You should tell lies when you set up the answers to your security questions, because telling lies makes security questions more difficult to guess. But if, for the sake of convenience, you decide to take the calculated risk of telling the truth on your security questions, you should remember to never accidentally post the answers to your security questions on your social media profiles. If your security question is, what is the name of your favorite pet? Don't go and post a picture of your cat on Facebook and then caption it, this is Percy, the greatest pet of all time. Some experts also recommend that you not post plain headshots of yourself online. Headshots like the ones that appear on a passport or a driver's license. Such photos could be used to make fake IDs with your picture and your name on them. And remember, as the burglary example above shows, it's a very bad idea to post location check-ins or vacation photos that tell the world when your house is unoccupied. Your physical location is an important piece of security information, so be thoughtful about what you reveal about your location online. Of course, the whole point of using social media is that you want to share information with other people. So if you use social media, you're obviously not going to withhold absolutely everything about yourself. But you should train your brain to think like a crook. Before you post information on social media, consider how that information could be used against you. Social media security threat number two is phishing scams and malware. Let's take a moment now to consider malware and phishing. We've already talked about both of these topics in other lessons, but now let's look at how malware and phishing scams can be aided by social media. Several malware and phishing scams are common on social networking sites. For example, a worm called Kubeface that spread on Facebook appeared in 2008. Kubeface would first appear on one's Facebook feed as a curious, strange, or enticing link, something that was apparently posted by a friend. But when a user clicked on the link, the user would be directed to a website with either a drive-by download of the Kubeface worm or with a Trojan horse that disguised the Kubeface software as a safe file download. Once a user downloaded Kubeface from either of these two methods, Kubeface would use keylogging software to steal the user's Facebook credentials. Once Kubeface discovered the user's Facebook username and password, it would hijack the user's Facebook account, and it would use that account to post more links to the malicious Kubeface website. Worms like Kubeface do not infect your computer directly through Facebook. Instead, they infect it through other web pages shared on Facebook. On Facebook and other social media services, you should be careful what you click on. You can't be sure whether or not a friend really posted something on her Facebook account unless you happen to be looking over her shoulder when she posts it. If you are remotely suspicious of something that a Facebook friend shared with you, you can just call that friend on the phone and ask them about it. You don't have to click on it. So although Kubeface uses Facebook, Kubeface isn't really native to Facebook because it directs users to outside web pages. There is another kind of software, however, that is native to Facebook that you should be careful about. And that software is applications. Be cautious with Facebook applications or any other social media applications. Applications such as games always require users to grant the application access to some of the user's profile information. Legitimate applications use this information to direct targeted advertisements toward users. That may not be pleasant, but it's generally not a security breach. There are several illegitimate applications, however, that simply harvest your information for sale, for identity theft, or for phishing scams. Illegitimate applications could take many forms, and so you should research all applications before you agree to install them or to share any information with them. And with any application that you install, it's a good security practice to withhold whatever permissions you possibly can from the application. You should also be cautious with advertisements. Scammers will sometimes use targeted ads on social media to direct users to phishing websites. If an ad tells you that you have won an amazing prize, or if it offers you a deal that's too good to be true, like a $1 iPad or airfare that's been discounted at 90% off, then you should ignore that ad. If you click on an ad like that, it will probably direct you to a phishing website, which will claim that you must enter private sensitive information 
in order to claim your prize. Okay, in this video we've looked at two threats, burglars on social media and phishing and malware scams on social media. In the next lesson, we're going to discuss social engineering, which is a set of practices that scammers use to draw users like you into their scams.